I'm Gil Popilski, Grandmaster from Israel, majoring in computer science. I'm a freshman. Hello, my name is Gil Popilski. I'm a Grandmaster from Israel. And today I'm going to show a game played in the Millionaire Chess in Vegas, where I played pretty well, generally. Um, it was played against the founder or owner of, or something of the chess.com site, Daniel Wrench, international master. So the Berlin variation of the Spanish defense, the Roy Lopez. And uh, well, after I, I've seen it, I was quite disappointed because I felt like playing an open game and uh, didn't really want to go to the end game, but also not to this close line. So I decided to play a slightly weird move, knight c3. And uh, well, there are many ways to develop here for black. For example, this in the spirit of the modern Steinitz defense. But he chose to put his bishop here. And now I basically get this old Roy Lopez line with d6, but down a tempo because I already played d3. And uh, obviously I'm not, I can't really hope for an advantage here, but I thought that it would be nice to play. Yeah, so now uh, this move is removing the pin from the knight on c6 and preparing to take on d4. So for example, if a castle, black can take here and exchange the knights and the bishops and uh, as it is well known, the side that has less space would like to exchange as many pieces as possible. So black is doing pretty well here. It's gonna castle soon. Sure. Yeah, thank you. For example, I go somewhere, black's gonna castle, I continue, continue developing, and black is slowly gonna put pressure on e4 and b2, and white has nothing. So I decided to give up my bishop. Also quite a typical idea. Of course, black is threatening to take on e4 now, so I cannot grab the spawn because there is no chance at all for any advantage here. Any questions, by the way? Yes, not? Excuse me. Yes. After d5, can I not take knight 4 immediately? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> this is even better. Just pair of bishops for black. So this move is, uh, devel uh, is developing the queen, preparing to put the rook on d1, but also defending e4, so it's quite <coughs> useful. Now, I'm, since e4 is protected, I'm threatening to take on e5. So black took, I took. Now I might take on c6 soon and destroy black's pawn structure. <coughs> so, he played this here in order to avoid taking the B pawn, possibly, but I'm not sure it was necessary. I think it was quite possible to castle here because the knight on D4 is quite active and uh, I don't think it's very dangerous to allow knight C6, but this is very possible, of course, too. Sorry? Yes. Can you play knight F5 instead of castle? Here? Yeah, I can play it, but... In castle, maybe bishop h6. Oh, bishop h6? Yeah. Can you go on uh, one, one castle? No, one castle. I mean, it's... Well, <coughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, but, yeah, it's true. Okay, but if you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I... Probably it's possible too, but... E4. This is very bad for black. Okay, so E4 is very weak, so I'm sure black will be doing very well somehow. I think one castle shows very bad. I'm just Wait. Castle short castle, bishop A6. Bishop A3, I guess. You mean long castle or short castle? Short bishop A6, bishop A4. 
bishop e4. Queen g3, knight h5. Yeah, that's true. That's why I didn't play knight f5, of course. <laughs> but yeah, in general, e4 is very weak, so putting the knight on f5 kind of creates overloading, so I didn't even consider it. Possibly I missed something winning, but maybe next time. So I castled here. And now black could simply castle because, as I said before, knight f5 is really nothing. Now it's simply possible to take on e4. And the knight on f5 is weak. And in case they take, the queen now defends the knight on e4. So black is okay. So I would play something like rook e1 and it's uh, mutual chances, but I don't think white can claim advantage. But my opponent, yes. On knight f okay. Where? Castle knight f5. What are they possible? Knight f5 where? Here. Castle and now knight f5. Oh, you you meant rook e1 here? Yeah, is it possible? <laughs> I don't know. It looks dangerous though. Let's say rook e8. Oh. F3. Queen h4, yeah. F3 queen h4. Yes. Oh, okay. Rook e4 takes. Uh, maybe d5. Yeah. G3. Hold on. Oh, f f3 immediately. Yeah. Of course. So we said queen h4. Rook e4. Takes. Takes. Oh. Well, but I still think black is better here. Okay, instead of rook a e8, you could play probably f5. So that would solve the problem. F5 here. Oh, and then queen, f queen h4. And g3 now? Well, there's at least a draw. <laughs> <laughs> in, case, in case we're interested. <laughs> that's very bad. Bishop f3. Ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. No need to repeat yet. Yeah. Yeah, so f5, that's true. <laughs> Wait, maybe then after g3, knight takes g3, queen c4, check. Queen takes c4. No. Oh, shit. What, what? <laughs> what was the offer? No, no. I thought g3. <laughs> I thought g3, knight g3, queen c4, but. No, it doesn't work. Interesting oh, attempt. No, no, I think the problem would be 6, sorry, my bad. So I decided to not not to waste too much time looking at this. But of course it's a lot of fun. So instead my opponent maybe he didn't see all the sacrifices on g3 so he played g6 instead, which is a very bad move because you can play it when the bishop is here and then you can go to g7 and it's a good spot but now it just creates many weaknesses. I played this I could try bishop h6 to make short castle more difficult, but knight g4 is possible, and I cannot go after the rook, of course, because the bishop is trapped. So how is bishop h6 possible? It's not. No, it's not useful. So I let him castle, and here possibly I was too hasty with taking on c6. Could have just played bishop h6 to put the bishop around the king, make the king feel uncomfortable. And just not allow knight g4 and keep my advantage. It's not so easy to find a good plan for black. The d5 square is under control. It's difficult. This, of course, going after the bishop is not very useful because it leads to nothing, only weaknesses in the king's, uh, queen side. Instead I took here, and now he could have taken bc6 and he covers d5. And something like this. Now g6 is surprisingly more useful than before because the bishop goes to g7. And black is probably not doing too bad. 
Anyway, he took with the queen. Now, I had decided that I must try to play on the long diagonal, so I played b3, but concretely it's not a very good idea for tactical reasons that we'll soon see. I could have... I looked at ideas like knight d5 and put the bishop on the long diagonal, but there are many move orders. So doing this immediately was better. Because if he takes and defends the bishop that I threaten now because of the line that was opened, I can send my queen to d4. Because if I try to develop the bishop by playing b3 or bishop d2, black has time for bishop f6, taking control of the long diagonal. So Why I can play... Why not bishop h6? Hmm? Why not bishop h6? Yeah, then then bishop f8. It's it's, it's it's pretty good, but bishop but queen d4 is even better because after rook e8. No, I can just do this and put my bishop to c3. No, it take it can take with the queen. Black. Black can take with the queen on e8, not allowing you to take on a7. Take with the queen, and of course it's better, but... Oh, okay. It's better, but it's not the end of the world. Unlike bishop d2, which is possibly indeed the end of the world for black. Now I play bishop c3, and it's not going to be pleasant. Note that I cannot go b3 because of bishop f6, and my first rank weakness is a big problem now. In fact, I'm losing the rook because I'm forced to go with the queen back to defend. A very sad end. So that's the importance of queen d4 because I can go bishop d2, bishop c3 and mate soon. Black, of course, doesn't have to take. So, <coughs> did you oh. look into knight d5? But you didn't see queen d4. What was your evaluation during the game? Yes, I didn't really look at queen d4, I didn't look for it, that's the problem. I was looking more at developing the bishop immediately. And, uh, but also there is this thing, rook f8 simply. And the idea is that again I can play bishop d2. I was mainly looking at b3, but the problem is that it doesn't defend rook e1 right away. In, the, in these cases, black goes away with the bishop and now threatening the rook, so I cannot take the queen. Oh, wait, in this case, yeah. So we can just go back for now. Bishop b2. Wait. Ah, no, it goes, it goes here. I think, no. Bishop b2. Hold on. Bishop b2. Oh, oh yeah, bishop h4. <laughs> ah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, g3. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Okay. Maybe what I was thinking about is rook takes here and rook e8. But then I can just move the rook. Mm. Man, you can take. You can just take on c6 for free. Queen oh, one. yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, okay, it wins too. Yeah. Um, how did I get here, rook e8, b3, ah, I think it was something like this actually, bishop f8 here, now again the threat of rook e1, so I'm developing the bishop and defending here, and now the queen goes somewhere, and it's, black somehow manages to survive, c4, bishop g7, and the game continues. Yeah. But the thing is I can play bishop d2 here and now there are no weakness there's no weakness in e1, so I just carry my plan. And black doesn't have tactics. 
yeah. Black is supposed to go here and then I just have a much better ending. Yeah, so I played this move, which is not so good. Actually, it, it's a waste of time in a way. Because now I decided to play this move. As I was quite disappointed about the position that we've seen not long ago. That there's no way to prevent bishop g7 and one more change of pieces when I have more space. So I decided, well, I think it means that one is very skilled if they can admit their mistakes. <laughs> so I went here, admitting that b3 is a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, so maneuver is not so interesting necessarily. Now I finally got to the long diagonal, threatening to take here, so I kick the knight out. Now I'm threatening to play f4, and uh, for example, if black, black defends the pawn, let's say, can play f4 and destroy black's structure here. Go somewhere. Black maybe can play this on the diagonal, but I can defend the knight. No, but black. Just think of something like e5 and knight e4, yeah. Yeah, probably. No, bishop two and bishop two. Ah, yeah, that's true. Although now, now that I look at it, it's not that impressive. Knight d4, maybe. B4. B4. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not very impressive. What rook is a bishop c3 rook e4? Yeah, exactly. So what else? Would have just gone for bishop f2 and then e5 knight e4? No, I can probably just... I mean, it's still better. You, you may consider bishop takes h, a, seven. Bishop you takes what? Con, you might consider it. It's not f4. Bishop takes my a7. Oh, no, ah, yeah, yeah. Seven. Oh, that's true. I can oh, take. No. I can take. And the thing is, black cannot play yeah, it's this motif because the queen is defended. Anyway, I might consider f4 later. So he put the queen in a place that will not require him to ruin the pawn structure. And also keeping f4 under control. Anyway, some maneuvers, threatening f4. This is why I put my rook in a seemingly passive place. Now it's more or less a balanced position, but I think I'm slightly better because I put some pressure and I might start start a kingside attack by, for example, if black decides to remove this active bishop, I can take and send my knight here, I mean to e3 and g4, f5 maybe, and I think I'm better anyway. d6 is weak, the king is slightly weak, but my opponent blundered here. Actually, it's a special effort because Otherwise, in this case, the queen could go to d8. And now he has to play this move. Otherwise, the queen is trapped. There are no places. Here, actually, I'm a pawn up, but my opponent found a defense here, pinning the pawn. But I have this tactic, escaping the pin and also eyeing this rook. The reason I chose this game was because even after I won the exchange, turns out it's not so easy. And I think it shows how chess really is difficult. We took here. And now black has a dilemma, because I want to play c4 and uh, defend d5 and open the position a little bit maybe. So black either can allow it or play bef b4, which he did in the game. But then I can push my rook to c4. He has to defend the pawn. Now it's not that clear what I should do, because it's difficult to have both of the rooks in the c file, because it's not very accessible and I have to defend the king, which is weak. The bishop here is quite problematic. 
going to the king's side. I don't think it's... I don't even know precise answer. I, I believe so, but I have no proofs, of course. Practically, it's probably very likely to win. But I don't know, if there's a very tough defender as black, I'm not sure at all. What do you think? <coughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. I thought during the game that maybe I have 80% chances against 20 for draw. Maybe 70, not sure. But I thought the chances are quite high. So my point in these maneuvers was to limit black's options as much as possible. The queen is on e3 because I don't want to allow things like queen g5 and start looking at these diagonal. Now I might play rook a6 soon to put the spawn under fire and maybe play rook a7 because f7 is weak too. I considered rook a6 here for quite a while but then I leave the C file unguarded. So I avoided it. Decided to play this move. The point is to put F7 under fire, thus limiting the queen, but also defend this pawn. And now I'm very ready to play rook A6 because rook C8 has no threat. He played this move to avoid rook A6. Avoiding rook C7 now. Now it's the key moment of the game, more or less. Clearly I'm threatening to play rook h8 here, for example, here. And now I simply want to mate and there's no defense here. So black has to move the king in order to have the bishop covering h8. This was the, the move. Yeah, f5 is possible, but it's a concession. It opens the seventh rank. So I consider this good for me. Yeah. Oh, wait. First of all, I can... Yeah, I can, I can even do this. But one way or another, I think... Anyway, I believe that f5 is good for me because I have one more thing to to go for, because here, there are, well, a5 is weak, the c file, but it's not very clear what to do. But if the seventh uh, rank is open, I have something to look for here. So this was the move, and then I can chase the queen, and now I can play this move. And if black takes, I take, and I keep the file under control, and without the king, the queens, my king is safe, I can just bring it to the game. And if black doesn't take, I just have a lot of pressure here and it's very unpleasant to play as black. But my opponent blundered here, he played queen h6, that, that's move number 40 just before the time control. Now I, wi I win by force. He played this in the game, he could have gone rook b7, but I'm just winning easily this way. And beyond that, I can just keep the tension also. And I'm winning similarly to the game. So he played this. Now I gave him a check. He could take, of course, to try to reach material equality. But it's not much of a help because the king now cannot go back. So I sacrifice a pawn and then just mating him. So he decided to keep the bishop. Now I'm threatening queen h6, for example. Here, I'm he mating. Take bishop h8. Yeah, he did, he did it. And now this, ignoring the bishop, and this, threatening rook f4. He protected it. And I could have done it anyway, that was my original plan. This is opening the, the fifth rank. Now I can just do this, the next move I'm taking here with the queen and mating on h2. 
But I decided this looks nicer for some reason, so I changed my plans. Well, any, anything loses here, it doesn't matter. Now I did it. I thought it's more aesthetic. And mate. 